Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up the Christing Up podcast for this beautiful 5th of December 2022. Made for our veterans. Hate towards the media and more lies on Bill C-21. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. The Liberal government's coming after our guns. They want people to commit suicide. And some journalists are upset because of all the so-called online hate they're getting for their subpar performance. All that more come to the podcast. Please stick around. Listener and viewer discretion is advised. I do swear and I smoke cigarettes. Stay tuned. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me. There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast, a Canadian veteran's point of view on political, social, economic issues, and life. Here's Krusty. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show made for our veterans, hate towards our media, and more lies in C21, episode 185 the Christing Up Podcast. I'm your host, Krusty Canuck. Yes, in uh, recent events in the news, there have been some veterans who have been told by certain uh, case managers that maybe they could use the maid service, i.e. Uh, you know, medical assistance in dying. Now, yours truly here, ladies and gentlemen, is a veteran. You've heard this before. If you're the first time listener and subscriber to the podcast, I spent 20 years in the Canadian Army. Saw my share of action 2007, met some good people, lost some good people, made some friends, lost some friends. You know how the cycle goes when you put your ass in the line to do something and uh, somebody bites it. That's life. Yours truly, back in 2014, uh, went through some nasty issues and thought about doing some terrible things to myself. Luckily, I'm here right now, and I am not ever going to do that again because I believe in giving life a chance and doing what's right and living through experiences and learning and knowing the experiences and helping others the best you can, the best of your ability. However, in the news recently, there have been some reports of more and more veterans being told that, well, here's an option for you. You can just end your life. Now, here's something from CTV recently. I'll just put it in the stream here. Basically, a Paralympian was offered the same thing. Excuse me. I'll just read along here, and I'll leave this uh, link in my description for you to follow. And if you do like and hear what you see, ladies and gentlemen, please click like, subscribe, share this all over your social media platforms. Uh, from CTV there, the 2nd of December, a veteran and former Paralympian told a paramilitary committee, according to the paramilitary, duh, Parliamentary <laughs> Committee that a caseworker from the Veterans Affairs uh, Canada, VAC, offered her medical assistance in dying, made a week after the Veterans Affairs Minister confirmed that at least four other veterans were offered the same thing. Retired Corporal Christine Gauthier, who has been trying to get a wheelchair ramp installed at her home for the past five years, testified on Thursday that a caseworker told her that they could give her assisted dying, even offering to supply the maid equipment for her. Oh, how nice. Isn't that just sincere of them? Oh, joy. I was completely shocked and in despair, she told CTV's Power Play on Friday. It is remotely just what they're doing, exhausting us to the point of no return. Gauthier said uh, the offer for maid came during a phone call with a VAC caseworker where she was describing her deteriorating condition. In 1989, Gauthier suffered permanent damage to her knees and spine after jumping into a deep hole while training on an obstacle course. It was just getting too much and unbearable, she said. And the person that, in fact, mentioned that point, well, you know, we can assist you with assisted dying now if you'd like. And she was just shocked, as she said, because I was like, are you serious? Like that, that easy? You're going to be helping me to die, but you won't help me to live, she said. Gauthier, who completed in the 2016 Paralympic Games and the 2016 Invictus Games as a paracanoist, told the committee she sent letters detailing her experience to Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and Veterans Affairs Minister Lawrence McCauley. A spokesperson for Macaulay said Veterans Affairs is taking the issue very seriously while adding that providing advice on MAID is not a VAC service. Our employees have no role to mandate, recommend it, or raise it. Considerations for MAID are the subject of discussions between a patient and their primary care providers to determine appropriateness in each individual context. Erica lashbrook Knutson, press secretary for Macaulay's office, said in a statement to CTV News on Friday, Macaulay's office also told CTV News Veterans Affairs took actions to ensure this doesn't happen again. 
such as issuing a directive ordering all employees not to provide advice or suggestion to veterans on the issue of MAID and implementing mandatory training. When asked about Gauthier's experience being offered MAID, Trudeau called it absolutely unacceptable. We are following up with investigations. We are changing protocols to ensure what we seem obvious to all of us. That is not the place of Veterans Affairs can to offer them medical assistance and dying as a matter of course, he told reporters in Vancouver on Friday. Okay, and this, this goes on here. Uh, but apparently at least four instances of made offer to veterans, said the minister. Last week, McCauley testified to parliamentary committee that the department had found four instances of made being offered to veterans during internal investigation that was prompted by reporting from Global News last summer. Okay, so what I'll do, ladies and gentlemen, I'll leave this article in the description for you guys to read and decide for yourself. I'll be putting a video from Facebook there, or a parliamentary and a conservative there, uh, questions Mr. McCauley on his standards and his efforts there. So interesting, interesting, uh, uh, interesting, interesting dialogue, hey, ladies and gentlemen. Four incidents, four situations, four situations where people... Uh, are being told, well, you can die if you want to. We'll help you along your way. And, and considering that they want to keep pushing this agenda, I, I think this coming March is where it becomes uh, tabled, where you can opt out if you want to. Now, I'm not for anybody suffering with a terminal illness. I am not for anybody who has ALS or a cancer or AIDS who is lying in bed or confined to a wheelchair and they are in sheer agony. If they want to die with dignity, as far as I'm concerned, any individual who is going through those circumstances should. Okay. But as someone who has suffered and still suffers from PTSD, what kind of positive option is that for somebody? Hmm? What kind of option is that for someone? When you reach out for help to understand why you have these things going on in your head, when you have these issues, compiling and compounding on your back, on your shoulders, in your head, in your psyche, in your very soul. Then you get some ass clown who calls themselves a caseworker. As the article said, this happened more than once. This is from two or three different individuals who have displayed this, okay? who have submitted this for our approval. Okay? There's people I know in my life that aren't with us today because... They opted out. All right. And regardless of how much it costs, what the bean counters say in regards to economics, you got to reach out and give a helping hand to these people that have suffered and endured. And it doesn't matter if you're a soldier. doesn't matter if you're a police officer. doesn't matter if you're a doctor, if you're a paramedic. It eh? doesn't matter if, if you witnessed a heinous crime or not. If someone is reaching out and they need to understand why do they have these nightmares? Why do they have these issues? Why do they hate themselves? Why is there high anxiety? Why is there high blood pressure? It all factors in, right? And these son of a bitches just want to save a few bucks. That's my take. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And just a reminder too, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like, subscribe on uh, the tube here. You can also find me on Twitter, Facebook, Rumble, Instagram, of course, YouTube, Getter, Podbean. And I'm also on uh, Amazon, Spotify, and Player FM too. So please click like and subscribe and share this content all around. And please consider donating too. Uh, my donation links are in my description. So if you want to toss five or ten dollars or a couple of dollars, please do. I'd like to make this a full time commitment sometime. So it takes my wonderful audience such as yourselves out there to make that a reality. So give yourselves a round of applause right now just for being there and listening to this show up to this point. And we'll keep carrying on there with episode 195. Yes. So carrying on. You're having government officials, people work for government offices. Doesn't matter what their qualifications are. They're sitting there trying to encourage you to fucking end your life. Now, it doesn't matter if it happened to four troops or 40 troops or one, one soldier or not. Okay, Veterans Affairs should be there to help the veteran, right? But I guess not, right? There's all these incidents in regards to someone. Well, we can do this for you if you like, or do that for you if you like, right? I know how painstaking it is to get things across. The endless paper trails, okay? 
the validations, more paper trails, the reports, the validations, the validations. Are you sure your injury is, is due to your service? Are you sure you have a bad back because of your time in the, in the infantry? Are you sure your knees are screwed up because of your time in the infantry? Are you sure your head is all screwed up because of the chaos? Yeah. How else do you validate that? And now we hear this coming from our government. Okay. We all heard the Justin Trudeau speech to that poor veteran there in February of 2018, where you're asking for more than we're able to give. This was just after he handed $10.5 million to Omar Kadir because of pain and suffering he suffered at Gitmo. Oh, and then what the eight million bucks they spent on that hockey rink to celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary, right? That you couldn't skate on or play hockey in, but we'll spend eight million dollars on that anyway. And here's a veteran asking for help, and <laughs> like just the buffoonery. And what gets me is that people are willing to stand by these clowns and justify oh, why they said this and why they said that. Oh, what are we supposed to do? What are we going to do? Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, 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 well, we're backing into a corner. So to my fellow veterans out there, they're listening right now. To my fellow listeners out there that appreciate what the veterans have done. It's up to us to stand fast and stand high against these clowns. That's all I can think right now, other than violence, but I'm not going to promote violence. I'm not going to promote that. You know, we have to set a better example and show them what it really fucking takes to, to lead and to stand for something that's real and right. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And I'll display a video here shortly there too, ladies and gentlemen. We're carrying on uh, again with the Krusty Canuck podcast here. Uh, you like and hear what you see. Please click like, subscribe, and share this content all over your social media platforms. I highly encourage it uh, before uh, Bill C-11 becomes a reality. And they might deem me not Canadian enough for this, for this, for this platform because I said too many bad words. Oh, my goodness. I'm just going to keep the video here for you as all, well, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but the, here's uh, what they uh, had on Friday there in the Parliamentary Committee. Uh, Lawrence McCauley being uh, questioned uh, by uh, Mr. Blake Richards from the Conservative Party. And just... Listen for yourself and see how much sidestepping is there. Honestly, just just to <laughs> just to get a better understanding and how a lot of these individuals like to operate on our dime. You know, the Canadian taxpayer, of course, we pay for this. We have to find this. We have to find that. We have to make everything accessible. You know, but I'm also finding too. The past few years, we have also seen quite a bit of buffoonery when it comes to uh, government regulation and how these individuals are really beginning to roll. So what I will do is uh, cue this up. Hopefully the uh, volume is adequate. If you can't hear it, then please let me know in the comments section. But I will, this is from Facebook here. And I will just cue this up for you as well. Pardon my expressions there, ladies and gentlemen. But this is just total buffoonery on this guy's part. It's like he's looking for his cues of some sort. He's just not really paying attention to the actual detail uh, to the questions at hand. Well, it's typical. It's a liberal party. What do you expect, right? But, you know, you decide. Okay. But uh, what I can tell you is we have found nobody else that has indicated to we right. find no information so to end. I just want, I, let me let, answer let, the let, question. Let, let, you let, asked the question. Well, and, sure, and, but let me let me interrupt because you're telling me that you still believe that there's only four when we've had Christine Gauthier come forward, we've had Bruce come forward, and I'm aware of at least a couple of others. Now, I granted they haven't come forward, but what we know that a couple of them have. And Minister, beyond that, in July of 2021, you say you want them to come forward. Christine Gauthier came to you in July of 2021. She did come forward. And you did nothing. Do you not see that as a problem? It is quite clearly that in your statement, I believe that Christine Gauthier was offered this service. Uh, I, 
I have to be very have careful any, what I indicate about specific files, Ex excuse me, but excuse I believe me that I would have to ask my deputy to respond. I just want to be careful. I do not want to affect sure. the investigation. Sure. What we want to find out is exactly what happened, yep. when it happened, and who was involved. And but I would ask my deputy to respond sure. to that. And just before 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 that you do that, the minister, um, I can appreciate that you you don't want to uh, you know do anything that would cause a harm to the investigation. However, can you tell us has have you done anything? I mean, you you, you were aware of this case back in July of 2021. Clearly, didn't pay attention to it. But now, at least that it's come to light in the media and in this committee since last Thursday, have you investigated what happened or done anything to try to investigate what happened in that period of time? Thank you very much. As I indicated previously at the meeting, upon hearing this, I asked my deputy to conduct an investigation. There, in doing that, I indicated to them I, I was briefed a couple of weeks ago, and I, I asked my deputy to expand the investigation, and he has done that. Uh, it has been referred to the RCMP. That has been done. What we want to do is make fully sure yep. that anybody that has any difficulty in this way, but I think in all fairness, we have to let the deputy respond to the uh, sure. to the what you indicated to the committee. Sure. Yeah. That's what I have done. Go ahead. Okay, sure. And if, just before you do that. Um, no, you're not going to yeah. no, no, let no, speak. Minister, sure I will. Uh, uh, you know, and, but you're you're the one responsible. And you were, this was brought to your attention in July of 2021. And you did nothing for over a year. Now you're telling us, well, there's an investigation. Great. That's wonderful. And we're glad to see that's happening. But you're, you keep telling us that there's four. We know there is more than four. And without a doubt, you know, I'm aware that the, the previous case that uh, came in the media, that the, the agent involved was, is in British Columbia. Christine Gauthier is located in Quebec. She had indicated to, on, uh, I heard her on a podcast this weekend where she indicated she had two separate caseworkers that, that both suggested made to her. One was male and one was female. So there is more than one caseworker involved here. There clearly is. So I wonder what you've done to investigate it. And can you maybe tell us, if, you, if you're, uh, whoever's going to answer it, uh, how many total times do, has your investigation uncovered that may have been brought me. up in either a Excuse call? Excuse me, with Mr. Richards, I'm sorry. Uh, the six minutes, it's way over. So please. Oh, six minutes is up. Sorry, guys. Anyway, like I was saying, like, uh, <laughs> honestly, you have someone who's elected to represent veterans. doesn't matter if you're representing senior veterans or new veterans or older veterans or mediocre veterans. You, you, you hire someone to do that. Okay. Now, of course, he was elected like everybody else in the last federal election, which is still up in the air in regards to Chinese involvement, but that's for another episode, another story. Okay. And here's this clown sidestepping. You saw it for yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. If you didn't hear it, my apologies, but uh, thank you out there to Blake Richards for loading that video and putting it on his Facebook page. Uh, still, it, it's self-explanatory. They don't care. They don't. They don't care. They would rather just, you know, have us wait. You know, have us wait for this and have us wait for that. And then, you know, they can sit back and have their champagne socialist ideas and and just reminisce about the good old days where they didn't have to take responsibility for anything. They just live in the, the so-called prima donna world they all perpetuate. Well, the rest of us here are trying to find answers and find the truth. So that's the thing, right? Anyway, I'll leave links in the description for you as all there, ladies and gentlemen, to uh, read at your own leisure. Decide from with yourselves what you think is right. And uh, you and I both know that these clowns, like they, say, they don't care about us. They don't want the best. They just want to cover their asses. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. As I mentioned earlier, episode 195, ladies and gentlemen, made for our veterans. Hate towards the media and more lies on Bill C-21. That's right. They're uh, uh, amending C-21 as we speak. Apparently, they added an additional 470-odd pages amending what guns we can have and not have. First, they banned the sale of, you know, pistols and military-style weapons, right? And now they're going after center fire rifles and center fire shotguns. And yet center fire is usually used in a lot of sports shooting and hunting. 
Interesting. Interesting. My best guess is this one, a band guns anyway, but I'll get to that shortly, but uh, they had a conference at Carleton university there on the 1st of December talking about online hate towards female journalists. And of course there, they had some token guy there who was beating himself up, calling himself a, a fifth generation settler in, in the name of this woke mantra. Now I have nothing against any journalist who is female, who is black, who is white. If they identify as this, identify as that, I don't care. What I care about is that we have seen the mainstream media, I would say for the better part of seven years, twist and turn and shape and shift every different narrative out there, except for actual freedom. Now, when you look at the convoy reports that have happened since February, just prior to the EMA being instituted by our beloved potato puppet, Mr. Justin Trudeau. Look how the st stories have changed. Okay. Look how the stories have changed all the time. They, they create these fantastic polls saying that 67% of Canadians agreed with the EMA. Or 67% of Canadians agree with high inflation. Or agree with the Prime Minister. Really? He has a minority government, so how does that 67% fit in? Huh. He also doesn't have a clue. And his cabinet proved that during the coverage of the Truckers Commission. So you can look at the footage all you want, and there's a lot of hours of footage here, ladies and gentlemen. I had to look a few of it myself, and I'm just like, wow. Thankfully, it was at a work day, and I could just listen to the background there as I was trucking along in my feed truck. But needless to say, you can tell who is being honest and who is not, okay? So when I hear about female journalists being harassed, because I'm an adult and because I'm a male, and I'm not going to sit here and say, I'm a white male, I don't give a shit about color. I give a shit about character. And I give a care about actual foundation of the story, the basis of the story, and the product you're presenting to the public, okay? Now, one of the journalists, of course, was Rachel Gilmore from TikTok fame, whatever. And her claim to fame was calling James Top, you know, that warrant officer from British Columbia that marched across Canada, marched across Canada, you know, rucksack on his back, and he walked across Canada. She had the audacity of calling him a white supremacist. And now she's at this big conference in Ottawa talking about online hate and harassment that she feels every time she posts a story. Who the fuck cares? How about you take responsibility for the story you write? I don't recall you ever talking to Mr. James Top about why he was marching and why he was doing it, about his service, about his service record, what he did, how many years he got in. Is he married? Does he have a wife? Does he have kids? What else does he do other sides being, uh, being a soldier? No, no, you got to take that angle and throw that white supremacy there, right? Because it's a trendy buzzword right now. So those female journalists that are at this panel worrying about hatred, Maybe you should tell a story, write a story, get out there, talk to your sources, dig deep, investigate, find the truth. Rather than worrying about your TikTok likes and dislikes, get out there and talk to people, talk to real people rather than just projecting it because you're being your own worst enemy here. And it's not sexist to say that. It's not misogynistic to say that. It's not hate speech. It's reality. Get on with it. Hey? Right? You think you're entitled to something just because you represent? Oh, you're part of this group? You're part of that group? Oh, someone disagrees with me? Oh, it's misogyny. Oh, someone doesn't like my story? Oh, it's sexism. Someone questions you on said story? Oh, it's hatred? No. <laughs> It's fucking adulthood. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, it's about owning your shit. Now, I've had to redact some things during the convoy. I made the mistake of assuming that someone did defecate and urinate on the Terry Fox and the war memorial. I took it back. And for those who didn't listen, 
the first time, I will say it again. I did not mean to say that anybody in that convoy defecated or peed or whatever on any of those monuments, okay? As I read further and researched further, nobody at the convoy did that. Those are pictures that were taken on Remembrance Day about two years ago where someone left a pee stain someplace. See, look what I just did. I was wrong about something and I owned it. I'm not a journalist. I'm not getting paid taxpayer funds to tell you a story to make you feel good with a cup of hot cocoa and maybe a foot rub or a reach around, depending on what you're into. I own something. There are times in my life I made mistakes and I made some stupid calls. But guess what? I'm still here to learn from it. What's your excuse? So at all the woke individuals out there and all the guys who want to con constantly self-flagellate yourselves because of your gender or because of your identity, don't! Because there's a silent majority of Canadians out there that are getting sick and tired of hearing it. Fifth generation settler. Like, really? You can't say you're a Canadian? What's wrong with saying that? You can't say you're an adult. You can't say you're a man. You can't say I'm an actual journalist. I'm an actual plumber. I'm an actual garbage collector. I'm an actual carpenter. I'm a father. I'm a husband. I'm a polo player. I'm a badminton player. Like, well, what's wrong? Like, you're catering. This self-flagellation and this constant bowing to this woke mantra. Is your life going to be any easier if you do that? I'm a Canadian. I'm an ex-soldier. I'm a laborer. I'm a husband. I'm an uncle. I'm a brother. I'm a friend. I'm a patriot. I'm a gun owner. I'm a hunter. I'm a sci-fi fan. I love comedy. I love Second City. Right? What else should I say? Oh, okay. Then I'm white? Okay, well, I'm white. Not that it matters. Right? I'm in my 40s. I pay my bills. I look after myself. I own my shit. What's your excuse there, journos, right? So while you sit here and compile about all the hatred that you get, guys like me and other people that I know are going to keep questioning your status quo. They're going to question your narrative. Now, I don't want to see any harm come to you. No, I don't. But the more and more you keep digging this crap, the more and more you keep lying to people saying, oh, we're victims of hate and misogyny, the more and more people are going to come after you and say, no, you're not. You were wrong about this. You were wrong about that. You were wrong about this guy. You're wrong about that guy. Own it. That's what it's coming down to. But instead, you're going to spend all this faculty money to have these conferences to talk about hatred. Right? The individual that wrote the article about the vaccines in the Toronto Star, individual that said, oh, uh, the unvaccinated should be this and the unvaccinated should be that. We've all seen that article. I'll look for it and I'll put it in the description. If not, you might have to look for yourself, my, my wonderful audience, but she had the audacity to say that oh, it was taken out of context. When you're posting headlines on a newspaper, and when the majority of Canadians I know personally can read, and they read very well, by the way, see something like that, what do you want them to think? Oh, she's just kidding. Oh, she doesn't mean that, said no one. Like I say, ladies and gentlemen, crack don't smoke itself. Stay updated and follow Krusty Canuck on Facebook, Twitter, Gab, Telegram, YouTube, and Podbean. Subscribe today and donate at KrustyCanuck.ca. And one more time, ladies and gentlemen, if you like and hear what you see, please click like and subscribe and share this content all over your social media platform. It doesn't matter if it's on the tube and Podbean, Facebook, anywhere else you see the Krusty Canuck logo pop up there, especially in the right-hand corner of your screen there. Please share. Click like and donate if you can, though, too, ladies and gentlemen. I've upgraded recently, too. Uh, I actually went and purchased a, a little uh, service that's going to give me a boost. I can actually afford it, and uh, I'm looking forward to wonderful things. So if you see the Krusty Connect podcast logo anywhere, please click like it. Click, eh, click on it. <laughs> click on it and see what you come up with there, too. It won't be spam. It won't be a virus or anything stupid like that. It'll just be my mug, my podcast, and my words for your listening pleasure, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice, eh? Oh, yeah. I could put on the sexy radio voice and we can go off to wherever we want to go. But no, I won't do that. I'll keep the satire and the politics and the humor uh, 
<laughs> alive and well. But please click like, subscribe, and comment. And if you're on, you see me on the tube here, please give me a few comments there too. I've had some nice subscribe subscriptions come up uh, recently and a few more thumbs up. So, you know, please give me a thumbs up there. Help the algorithm out here and help us create more decent Canadian content without worrying about identities and worrying about who's a settler, who isn't a settler. Because the majority of Canadians are not settlers. We may be descendants of said settlers but when i came out to western canada i didn't come out here with a wagon and oxen and 10 bucks in my pocket and a deed from the king no i came out here with a career a car and a plan self-explanatory so when someone calls you a settler then get them to back it up get them to back it up and then remind them too that in the 1860s 70s 80s and 90s you had settlers come over to this part of the country and then people laid their roots and foundations and raised families. And those families grew up and laid more roots and foundations and raised more families. So it doesn't matter what culture you're from or if you identify as a Canadian or not. We're not settlers. We're Canucks. And if you don't like the word Canuck or Canadian, well, you don't have to. No one's saying you do. But when you open up your wallet and you've got something like this, a few bucks there. Huh. How bad is Canadian culture after all? Ask yourself that. Anyway, carrying on again, too, with more of the uh, made for our veterans, hate towards our media, and more lies in C21. Now, as far as I know, the liberals have, like say, added more pages to the C21. Uh, I still think it's in second reading. I'm not sure if it's been lawed yet. But as I mentioned earlier, they basically want to take hunting rifles away right now i'm a gun collector and i'm a gun owner and i'm a shooter and i'm a hunter now i haven't hunted in the past couple of years probably because i missed the courses and i was either working or i just didn't have time but needless to say i do want to go out and get myself some meat and enjoy the fruits of my labors and i want to share the meat with my family and friends and those who are less fortunate right but now with this new legislation luring over our heads and more gun grab and more gun fear of, oh, oh my God, you have a big black gun. That's so scary. It's basically just a liberal government telling us that, oh, you, we can't have those anymore. Right now, Mark Mezzino keeps saying that we're not going after hunting rifles. We're going after those assault style rifles because they're meant to carry more ammo than usual. Now, I've mentioned this before in the podcast, ladies and gentlemen. That if you buy a semi-automatic rifle in this country, you are vetted all the time. You have to have your little, your little card. And I will show you my card, ladies and gentlemen. I am a licensed gun owner. Yes, I am. You have to get yourself one of these, okay? And in order to get one of those, you have to pass your course, your restricted and your non-restricted course, and you have to file your paperwork in and all that stuff. I think the fee is at $75 now. Uh, to Mirror Machine, New Brunswick, and you get processed and you get vetted by the RCMP every day. They want to look up this guy's name. Oh, who's this guy? He's got a card. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's good. He's good. Every day. All right. Now, the liberal logic is this. Well, since you have a, a rifle that can fire more than five rounds, which is allowed in Canada, okay, right? you have a semi automatic rifle and you have a magazine that can house 20 or 30, those magazines are always pinned at five. Pinned or capped at five, okay? Now, if you're caught messing with that pin or that cap on said magazine, say goodbye to your gun license, say goodbye to your gun, say goodbye to ever owning a firearm ever again. That's a big no-no. But the liberal logic is this. Well, considering you might have that, hmm, you might use that and do something really, really bad, <laughs> okay? So that's why we're going to ban it all. That's just like saying, okay, well, you drive a truck and you drink beer. Okay, nothing wrong with that. Lots of people I know drive trucks and drink beer. That doesn't mean they do it at the same time. But their logic is, well, consider you have a truck and you drink beer. We're just going to give you a DUI ticket just in case you decide to do that. All in the name of safety. See, that's their logic when it comes to gun regulations in this country. And they're still holding on to the Polytechnic Massacre that happened back in 1989 this month. Okay, I remember watching it in the news, and it was terrible. It was, God, that was evil, right? But then again, Canadian gun laws were a lot different then, too, right? And I remember they spent a good part of five years or six years in Parliament changing the gun laws to what they were before 
the liberals took over. Okay. Where you had to be vetted and it has to be registered and all that too. And they got rid of the long gun registry because it was just stupid, right? It was just really, it was stupid. It was a waste of taxpayers money and time and effort. And it cost billions later on, right? Now they just want to take them away because they really don't have a plan of actually buying them from you. And I'm not going to say buy back because they never bought them in the first place. They didn't do the training. So every gun owner out there owns what he or she worked for, what he or she earned. Okay. Now there was also a big bust that happened in Toronto today too. 62 illegal firearms, quote unquote, illegal firearms were, were, were caught by the Toronto police services. And there's six individuals that have been charged with, I think, roughly 260 crimes pertaining to these illegal guns. And when you look at the photographs, I'll leave links in my description here, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of these handguns are illegal because they're smaller pistols, right? And they're smaller uh, AK variants too, right? And according to the Toronto Police Service, 57 of those 62 firearms came from the United States. Now, I'm not blaming my American friends. I'm not blaming anybody in the United States. But gun laws in the United States are totally different than they are in Canada. You don't need a lesson from me to, to tell you that. We know this, okay? But they were smuggled, okay? And four of those guns were untraceable, except for one of them that was actually stolen from someone's home, they say, about a year ago. So obviously, whoever had their guns stolen called the police, told him, hey, someone stole my gun. So he was being a responsible citizen, okay? But I wonder what the liberals are going to make up as an excuse and what the TPS did. The TPS, I think, did a good job stopping these guns from hitting the streets. And they weren't just your typical cowboy pistol or revolver, you know? Some of these magazine capacities were 15 rounds. Some of them were smaller, so you can conceal them properly. Some of them were less than four inches. Some of these... Semi automatic AK variants were small and compact for concealment, which are highly illegal in Canada. You can't just go to a gun shop, even with the card, and buy something like that. Right? So they're illegal firearms. So to all the Mendocinos and Trudeaus and Freelands and all these anti gun advocates out there, what have you got to say? Look what the Toronto Police Service did. Right? They stopped. Some gangland activity. Now, I don't know the background of the six individuals that are arrested, however, but they've been tracing these guys for about eight to nine months now. So they've been hot and heavy trying to stop the illegal gun trade that's been going on. Right? So I'll leave links in the description there, ladies and gentlemen, for you all to look at and ponder at your leisure. But uh, something to think about. Right? They're backing people into a corner. All right, people like you and me, your neighbors, whatever. Now, I don't care who owns a gun, who doesn't own a gun. No one says you must own this. No one says you must own that, right? If you disagree with someone owning a firearm, well, you're entitled to that. That's fine, okay? But if you're scared of somebody because they own an inanimate object like this, this is a toy, ladies and gentlemen. This isn't real. This is a toy. This is something my wife got me as, as a decoration, right? It's a toy. You scared of something like this? See, this is a toy too. This is a pellet gun, right? That's all it is, a pellet gun. It looks like a pistol, but it's plastic. It's There's nothing to it. It's a pellet gun. It's for vermin, getting rid of rodents, right? You scared of that, right? I'm not going to pull out my rifles and my pistols to show you, no. But I think you get my point, right? I understand gun safety. I understand responsibility, yeah, once a month, I check them and I give them a pull through just to keep them oiled and ready to rock and roll. Gun maintenance. You do the same thing with your car. You make sure the oil level is good. You make sure the fluids are good. Make sure your tires are serviceable and you got enough gasoline to make it you go from point A to point B. Right? Just regular maintenance. And it's my property, just like what you own is your property. But now we've got the government who wants to step in and take it away. All in the name of safety, which you know is BS. They just don't want you to have them. Something to think about, especially next year, too, where they project that food costs are going to go up and the cost of living is going to go up because of all the spending they did during the pandemic, which was basically just irresponsibility in their part, and they don't really care. They're going to expect you and I to pay for it. Not this guy, and neither should you.
Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, this has been another episode of the Cresting Act Podcast, episode 195, Made for Veterans, Hate Towards Our Media, and More Lies in C21. Tis the Christmas season, silly season, ladies and gentlemen. So do what you can to help each other in these trying times. If you can, give a few cans of extra goodies to the food bank. Maybe talk to your local church or local charity groups. Maybe help a family out that's less fortunate. Uh, it's been snowing here in my area of Alberta for a little while, so maybe shovel some bit of snow, help your neighbor out, lay some salt down, uh, lay some sand down. Just make sure everything is properly safe. Don't worry about their guns. Just worry about them slipping and hurting their heads. You know what I mean? And try to be festive, and we try to be optimistic. To my veteran friends out there, don't let this crap get you down. All right? And if you have a lifeline, someone you talk to, get out and talk and express it. Get out and discuss it. And if you're mad, be mad. If you're upset, be upset. Okay? If you're concerned, be concerned. Okay? This irresponsibility has to stop, period. Because like I said, yours truly went through some trying times. And I'm here now. Because I had to fight for the support and I got myself into a great network. And if you have any questions, don't hesitate to email me. Reach out to me. Let me know what's on your mind. And I will do my best to give you the information that you need to help you along your way. But still, contact your MP, ladies and gentlemen. Contact your MPP or MLA. And tell them what's on your mind. Because this, this bullshit's got to stop. But like I say, ladies and gentlemen, this has been... Another episode of the Crescent Podcast for 5th of December, 2022. I wish nothing for but good things for you all out there. In this trying time, and this Christmas season, do what we can to help each other out. Look after your friends and loved ones. And always remember, humanity and merit wins the day. Take care, and I'll probably talk to you tomorrow. Bye for now. Hit it, sweetheart. Because I am hard, you will not like me! There is no racial bigotry here. Here you are all equally working. This has been another episode of the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Stay sane and thank you for listening. From Western Canada, this is the Krusty Canuck Podcast. Well, smack my ass and call me Judy.